Hi friends, I'm Isabel and uh, welcome or welcome back. This is a little recap of what I learned from painting every day for 30 days. So if you're new here, I painted a hand in gouache every day in February and the first two days of March. And technically I painted 31 hands because apparently I can't count and I accidentally drew one extra. So I painted one extra on the last day. But anyway, uh, yeah, I painted just a small um, hand every day for 30 days, which I'm really proud of myself. I wasn't entirely sure that I would be able to do it, but I did it and totally would recommend it. All right, getting into the stuff that I actually have written down instead of me rambling. <laughs> um, the first thing that I learned was that I totally have the time to paint. And I mean, some days it was a bit of a stretch, but I did it. I painted every day. <laughs> I consciously tried to stay off of social media for this month. Obviously, I wasn't completely off of it, but, like, I deleted it from my um, phone's, like, home screen. So it was in a different spot if I wanted to go click on Instagram, and I really just tried to only use it for posting. I think I set a time limit of, like, half an hour a day. So that helped me to stay on task, um, and that gave me more time to paint because half an hour of extra painting time a day or depending on how much time you spend on social media it could be an hour or two even that you're losing to mindless scrolling that's a different different topic but yeah just intentionally setting aside time to be away from my screens was really helpful because I was just doing what I love which is painting and I intentionally said I'm going to do this every single day I'm going to make time for it I have the time for it and I learned that I did so that has made me want to try to paint more often I do paint or draw quite frequently but sometimes I'll go four or even five days without um creating anything and I think it's good for me at least to force myself to create. I definitely noticed an increase in my mood. You know, obviously all my problems are not magically cured or anything. <laughs> I still have uh, my fair share of mental health issues. But making time to relax and do something that brings me joy was just such a good investment in my mental health and even if you can't paint every day or if painting's not your thing, whatever, just I would really recommend finding something that makes your soul happy and intentionally putting time into that. Also on the subject of time, I think I got a better understanding of time from this because, you know, aside from realizing how much time in the day I spend on my phone or lying in my bed listening to music. I also learned more uh, the value of an hour or even 45 minutes. Most of these hands were taking me about that much time. I think there were a couple that I picked out a lot and they took me closer to an hour and a half, a couple that were more of half an hour. And I'm a person that gets frustrated when a painting isn't finished quickly because I'm not very patient. Well, I'm patient when I have to be, but with painting, I'm not very patient. So it's interesting that I chose watercolor as my main medium. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I think now I have a better concept of what I personally can accomplish in an hour. And for me, that's a pretty decent hand painting. So I think I'm going to try to carry that over into my work from now on. Obviously, you know, I've done some paintings in 10 minutes, but if I want it to be something that I really like, then I need to spend a little bit more time on it. And also with gouache, because it's opaque, you can just keep picking at it and going over things. So it is a slower medium than watercolor. 
for me at least. I think I'm a little less frustrated with my slow art process um, now because I have a better sense of what I can actually accomplish in that time. Another pro to painting every day uh, was that it was easier to carry over observations that I made while painting. So when I'm painting, I often note, oh, I wish I'd done that a little bit differently or ooh, maybe these colors would work better for the next time that I paint this subject. And so by focusing on one subject the entire month, I was able to really hone my technique and colors and also just how to use gouache because this was actually my first attempt at gouache. I got a set for Christmas and I was kind of using it a bit in January and then I was like, We're going to go all in. We're going to paint with just gouache every day for a month. So I learned a lot about gouache, um, which I'll recap after I get uh, through this little section. But basically, if I thought of something that I wanted to do a bit differently, I could just apply it to the next day. Or sometimes I would even start the next painting right then because... These didn't take me that long. I mean, it was usually about an hour, but I usually had a little bit more time after I finished and I would just apply what I had learned. So the things that went well and the things that I wanted to change to the next hand. And I learned a lot about technique that way because usually I'll have a few days gap between paintings and it's harder to remember what I've learned from that painting. So I always feel like I'm starting from kind of a fresh slate when I start painting. I don't feel totally comfortable with what I'm going to do in that painting. But just painting hands took away the stress of not knowing what I wanted to paint. And I wasn't trying to come up with any creative ideas. I was just painting one subject matter from references and also I did all the sketches um, in advance so I didn't have to worry about a blank sheet of paper and the sheet of paper already had all the hands I'd already painted. I think I have about four sheets of paper total. So then I wasn't I wasn't looking at a blank sheet of paper so I could just jump right in and I think that that was really helpful and it kind of makes me want to work on more large-scale pieces that take a couple days or weeks to finish because then I have something on the paper already and I can just jump in without feeling like I need to start and finish a whole painting or come up with a new concept. Okay, so I said I was going to talk about the techniques I learned um, with gouache, which may be applicable to some of you. Um, So I'm just going to do this section real quick. And then I'll have a couple more observations at the end. So my background um, in painting is watercolor. That's pretty much the only medium that I have learned and feel comfortable with. So gouache is my first real opaque medium. So at first I was painting with these like thick layers and a more graphic style because I couldn't figure out how to blend. Because, you know, with watercolor you put down the two colors... And you just kind of like push them into each other or you take like a wet brush and run it over. One thing I learned that I kept doing, even though I knew it was not going to help, was taking a damp brush and running it over the colors to try to blend them. But because I was using such thick layers, they were already almost dry. And so with blending, I learned that I need to put the color down, quickly make the transition shade, put that down mix the other one, and then zhuzh it all together. So that was a new experience. I also, near the end, started experimenting more with watery layers, much more like watercolor. And, oh, it felt so good (laughs) to be just layering these thin washes of color. I was painting on toned green paper the whole time, so it was a little bit difficult to stay in a really thin, layered format. So... I'm curious to see how the how my gouache technique will change on white paper because I haven't really painted on that. I just had this green mixed media paper that I just really wanted to use. So 
And I liked it, by the way. I'll have it linked in the description. It's the Rembrandt Toned Mixed Media Pad, I think is the name. So yeah, basically, I learned that I really like thin layers. What a surprise. Just layering colors and watching them blend together is so satisfying. Also, I used a lot less white near the end of the challenge because I was learning to sort of mix the lighter shades as I went. I was doing a weird thing with like an underpainting for most of it. I don't know why I kept doing it because I kept having to put a lot of white on to cover up the paint and already put down. But if I just put white on the green paper, it laid down a lot thicker, which was interesting or a lot more opaquely. So I don't know why that is, but yeah, I learned to more paint what I was seeing from the beginning instead of trying to do an underpainting thing. Okay, back to the observations that I have because I think we are almost done now. So there were a few times, actually a lot of times, where I struggled to find the motivation to paint. And I have often felt this. And the way that I tend to combat it is by holding myself accountable with social media, which, I mean, it's external validation. <laughs> so I don't know what... Some people have different opinions on that. Anyway, um, I like external validation. <laughs> I'm not a huge internal validation person. I'm not good at validating myself. And obviously, I'm, I'm not saying find out your validation from social media, but... I'm saying it's helpful for me to post online regularly because then there's an expectation and there are people that want to see it. And a couple of you left some really sweet comments on the last um, post of the challenge saying that you had followed closely and that you were just really excited. And some of you are commenting the entire challenge. So shout out to Lisa. You're great. Um, thank you. It was really sweet to have people cheering me on and know that people were excited to see my progress um, because I was a little worried about how this challenge would go over, but uh, I was doing it for me. So anyway, um, yeah, holding myself accountable with posting every day or pretty much every day. I also tried hard not to make my task too big. I've done challenges like Inktober in the past, and I did it the first year, but I did not complete it the second year. I made a video about that. I will have it linked if I remember. But the short answer is that my mental health was just really struggling, and it was just too big of a challenge for me this year. But I still felt like I needed to do a monthly drawing challenge, so I made my own. <laughs> And I made sure that it was a small task because Inktober was taking me a couple of hours every day consistently. And this was taking me, like I've said a couple of times, about an hour, which is a lot more manageable for me, at least because I have other obligations outside of art. I also tried to accept all of the mistakes and just see them as something to learn from because all of these were studies right? They weren't finished pieces. They didn't have to be masterpieces. And I'm gonna try to carry over that mindset, not of studies, but of not everything has to be a masterpiece. Because I don't want to be one of those artists that rips up everything I ever make and isn't satisfied until I get something that is a masterpiece. Because I think it's important to see your progress. And, you know, every hand here is unique and it's irreplicable. Just like all of us. Aww. Okay. <laughs> uh, now I'm getting into the territory I was going in on my video from last week. Okay, I'm going to stop being cheesy now. But basically, what I'm saying is... I learned to see the mistakes as something that made them unique because even if you painted from the same image that I did, yours wouldn't look the same because I have my own touch and you have yours. 
And we all made our own mistakes, but that's what makes them unique. Well, thank you for watching this video, and thank you to everyone who supported me through this. And I hope you're having a wonderful day, or that this helps to make your day a little bit better. Uh, lots of love to you, and I will see you next week. Alright, bye! <laughs>